Hello, hello. Welcome everybody uh, to our first, what am I talking about? Um, buyer webinar. And today we are, we've been talking about the buying process and what that looks like. Uh, today, our focus is on how Summit County is a little bit different. There's some strange things in Summit County that make it a little bit different from buying in suburbia. So let me, okay, we are broadcasting. Thank you for joining us via Zoom or on Facebook Live. We're happy to be here today. And I've got several, several team members and a special guest as well. Um, my name is Keely Gray. And I have been with Summit Real Estate for 18 years in Summit County for about 20. And uh, I am just enjoying these beautiful summer days, um, whether that's out showing property, working with sellers, going for a hike with the kids and the dog, just loving this weather. And I'm gonna let the other, um, our other team members introduce themselves and um, I'll introduce our special guest in just a few. Hello, I am Dina Hefner. I've been with Summit Real Estate for four years now. Um, I've lived in the county for since 96, a long time. And if I was doing something different today, I would certainly be out climbing rocks <laughs> with my family. It's a family event that we love to do. And then after a little bit of climbing, probably sit at the beach in Frisco and hang out and just paddle board and relax. I love right. Summit County. Nice. Thank you, Dina. Hi there. Oh. Hi there. I'm Isabel Rawson. Um, I've been with Summit Real Estate for four years. And in my spare time, I love um, going out camping and being out on the lake. Lots of fun little lakes around the area. And one of your favorites is Lake Powell? Lake Powell, I know, out of state. So then second favorite would have to be Lake Dillon, although it's okay. a bit chilly. <laughs> okay, love it. <laughs> Thanks, Isabel. And hi, everyone. I'm Trisha Moore. And if I were out and about today, I'm certain I would be biking somewhere with my family, probably to a brewery or to catch a cocktail somewhere and enjoying the weather as well. That's our gig and our family is biking and hiking. So nice. nice to be with you today. Thanks, Tricia. Trevor Wagner with Alpine Bank, thank you so much for joining us uh, to give us the financial perspective on these stranger things in Summit County. Um, tell us a little bit about, about you. Thank you, it's nice to be here. Um, my name is Trevor Wagner, I work for Alpine Bank, which I have worked for for the past six years. I have been a part of the Summit County community for 12 years. Um, was brought here because I enjoy being outside. Uh, I'm a runner, a biker, and a snowboarder. And I have two little ones who hopefully will enjoy those things with me. But if not, I might be picking up some new activities. <laughs> yeah. That's better than picking up new kids, you know. <laughs> <laughs> How old are your kiddos, Trevor? They are two and a half and six months. Wow. wow. Fun. Fun, fun. Okay. Um, Summit County Stranger Things. We're gonna we're gonna talk about this here. If you're joining us now on Facebook Live, feel free to go to the Zoom link so you can interact, ask questions, let us know where you are listening from. Um, whether that's Summit County or somewhere else in Colorado or a different part of the country. We're glad that you're listening. Use the Q&A, ask us questions. We'd love to hear about what you want to hear about next with our next webinar. We are always open to ideas and suggestions. And today's topic was actually um, a recommendation from a buyer that I'm working with that wanted to know if we had a webinar on partial ownership. So thank you for the inspiration. Uh, these are the four topics that we're going to talk about. Uh, Dina's going to talk about vacant land and building. I'm going to talk about partial ownerships. 
Isabella is going to talk about out of the box financing uh, for these stranger things in Summit County. And Trisha is going to talk about deed restricted pro properties. And then we're going to bring Trevor in to talk about financing um, with those things because it's not, it's not typical. Okay, Dina, stepping stones to building your dream home. Talk Hello, everyone. Um, I love this subject. I get clients calling me. We get clients calling us all the time, um, asking us about building in Summit County, building a custom home on vacant land. So it's great. It's typically um, the price range right now um, is between 56,000 on the least expensive to 11.5 million is the most expensive. Both of those properties happen to be in Breckenridge. <laughs> so Breckenridge has us covered. Yes, they do. <laughs> um, the average price um, for a lot right now for vacant land is right around 580K. Wow. Um, the average price to build per a square foot to build a house um, is 300 to 350 a square foot. Um, things to consider when you are looking at vacant land. Say 56,000, that sounds like an awesome deal. And maybe it is. Um, one thing to consider is, does that lot have a big slope to it? What's the excavating cost gonna be? Um, retaining walls. It's something to consider that maybe a flatter lot might end up being less expensive in the long run. Um, is the lot buildable? Does it have wetlands? Another thing to consider. So when you're looking at vacant land and considering to build, the first thing to do is if you need a loan, call Alpine Bank. Trevor has you covered. <laughs> He That's will, uh, he'll tell us all about that in just a few minutes okay. and reach out to the building department. Um, go online. We provided a link for you to just go online and to look at what is the process? What's the permitting process? What are the fees? Um, there's lots of different um, requirements from the building department up front before you even start building. Um, this, yes. sure. Can I ask you, um, should one start working on that permitting process before they make an offer, once they're under contract or waiting until once they own the lot? Because they wanna make sure they're gonna be able to build the type of house that they want. Right, right. Good question. Um, I highly suggest that you just do your due diligence, give them a give the building department a call, ask them questions about the lot that you're interested in. However, you don't want to go through the process before you own the lot. There's a lot of upfront fees that are that go into it. Okay. So that process is after you actually close on the lot. Good to know. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, another requirement to keep in mind is you can't build your own home as an owner. You need to have a licensed contractor. The licensed contractor that I recommend reaching out to, um, he he's been working in Summit County for over 20 years, is Tony Matheson with Matheson Construction, Matheson Builders. Um, I also provided a link to his website below. Feel free to call Tony. He'd love to talk to you. <laughs> Tell him that Dina sent you. Yeah, he knows I sent you. <laughs> <laughs> um, Trevor would love to talk to us more about um, construction loans and lot loans. Take yes. it away, Trevor. Thank you, Dina. Um, so the way I kind of look at this whole process is a three-step process. First, you're going to want to purchase your land. And then once you find that, think about what the construction financing is going to look like secondly. And then thirdly, after construction is complete, you need to think about your permanent 30-year mortgage. So that's kind of the three-step process. 
I primarily focus on two of them, and then Alpine Bank does have a mortgage originator who can help you with permanent financing once construction is complete. So to start with lot lending, um, we do offer lot financing that would be 25% down and a whole range of terms, anywhere from two years to five years and a range of amortizations really to kind of fit your needs because kind of as Dina was alluding to, once you get the lot, there's a lot of work that goes into getting to the construction part of it before you even actually come talk with me again. Typically, that'll take probably around a year to do all your permitting and your design and your plans and all that stuff, which would is typically all paid out of pocket in cash um, and then can be reimbursed with a construction loan. So once you have your lot, uh, we depending on kind of how you want to do it, we have an interest only product or a principal and interest product, really just depending on folks needs. And then once you have your lot, you do all the permitting process, the design and that. And then about a year later, you'll probably come talk with me again about construction lending. And then with construction lending, what you're really looking at is a loan that's probably going to be from a year to 18 months or 24 months that has a draw process. And that draw process is an interest only payment. And that's designed to get you all the way from when you first start digging to when you get CO, which is Certificate of Occupancy. Um, and then once you get Certificate of Occupancy, then you're going to start looking at some permanent financing. But prior to that, with the draw process, basically you get approved for a loan amount and then you start drawing on those funds as needed to complete the project. And then that's when interest starts to kick in. With construction lending, during construction, we only do interest only to help folks continue to pay rent or a mortgage or whatever they are paying where they're living, and that kind of helps keep cash flow up. And then, um, obviously, like I said, you go into traditional financing after that. So that's really pretty basic and pretty fast, so if there's any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Um, another thing that we do offer is um, a one-time close, which basically puts you into a five-year or seven-year fixed product and then a 30-year term so that you don't actually have to go to traditional financing afterwards. The draw period is going to look the same. That's going to be 12 months to 18 months to 24 months, however long the project's going to take, um, just kind of depending on the scope of the project, how big it is, how fancy it is, that type of thing. Um, that People like that because it makes their life a little bit easier. Once project is complete, you don't have to worry about any more financing. You're all set. Your rate's locked in for five to seven years, um, and then you're good to go. Probably and save another up. thing that I like to point out, I'm sorry, what was that? Sorry to interrupt you. Probably save no up in costs that way also. Yeah, that's actually what I was just about to point out. Um, because you do have to pay some closing costs for the lot loan, then you have to pay some more closing costs for the construction loan, and then again for the um, permanent financing. Now, if you walk through the whole three-phase process with Alpine Bank, we do offer some credits back on some of those fees, because um, typically lenders uh, will have a origination fee. We don't always, but we look at 1% origination fees on construction loans because there's a lot that goes into your construction lending. And another thing that I like to point out is when you're thinking about building a home, you really want to get a good relationship going between you, your lender, and your builder. Um, because without those three pillars, things can go awry and everybody needs to be on the same page because it is a very long process from the moment you buy that lot to when you actually get certificate of occupancy. It can take gosh, you know, up to five years, just kind of depending on everything. Um, so yeah, good point. And that's all I have. What's that? He covered it. I was going to say, I heard that it can take up to two years um, from the moment, Tony actually told me this. He said, typically right now, it's running about two years from the moment you buy the lot to getting permits to building and completion. So yeah, it takes a while. I mean, five years, worst case scenario, I hope. Yeah, well, and I say that too, just because sometimes folks like get the lot and then they don't really want to start building for a few years. They really want to take their time on the design part and all of that. 
Um, but if you're ready to go, yeah, you even if you're going quickly, yeah, at least I would say at least two years. Okay, not to scare anybody away, but it's good to set the expectations. <laughs> Absolutely, right? Because it's a it's a big process. Um, Correct. Thank you, for that Trevor. Appreciate it. My, if you have any questions, pleasure. Trevor specifically, um, put them in the Q and A. You can also um, we're watching Facebook Live, so if you have any questions, you can put them there also and i would also just like to say that this is why we like to use local lenders um, because they know the intricacies of land in summit county and what it's going to take to get financing um, so we always recommend local lenders whether it's one of these stranger things like land or partial ownership condo tells non-warrantable things or just a conventional standard cookie cutter loan. So thank you. Trevor, I'm gonna have you back. Um, I'm gonna talk about fractional ownerships now and I'm gonna have you back at the end of that. Uh, and you can talk to us about financing um, partial shares. Uh, so a fraction of the cost, a fraction of the property. Um, we get a lot of um, questions from buyers like, is this for real? Is this price? Can I really get a ski and ski out at Keystone? Three bedrooms for 150,000? If the price looks too good to be true, it probably is. And that would mean that it's a partial share. Um, so how do you know whether it's a partial share or not? Just ask us. Um, our MLS, we can set you up on a specific search that is just for partial ownership opportunities. It's kind of hard to differentiate that on um, our syndicated sites that people look at, Zillow, homes.com, Trulia, all of those. That's why we get a lot of calls. If we had a nickel for every time we, we got the call, is this for real? Um, we could buy our own fractional ownership, okay. <laughs> right ladies? <laughs> um, so a fractional ownership, you're buying a fraction of the property for a fraction of the cost. Truly, uh, this is not a scenario that's going to work for everybody, but it is a wonderful opportunity to get your foot in the door with Summit County Real Estate and be able to use the property on a more limited basis for a, a smaller cost. Um, the purchase price and the maintenance costs are shared amongst all of the owners. Um, the percentage of um, the fraction of ownership in Summit County, it can be 5% and it can go up from there. What we typically see is 25% um, ownership. We call those quarter shares. Um, so what's the difference between a partial ownership and a timeshare? Uh, with a partial ownership, you actually own your percentage, your fraction of the property. Um, with the timeshare, you own the right to use the property, but you don't own the actual real estate itself. Timeshares are typically one week long, some of them two weeks, but here in Summit County, we see one week timeshares and uh, they're tradable. So if you know you want to uh, do a ski vacation one year and then a beach vacation the next, you can trade uh, your property up here in Breckenridge and go somewhere else. So that's kind of cool also. Uh, with partial shares, there is a partnership agreement. You are buying into what already exists as far as um, the, the agreement between all of the owners and what that looks like. Um, how, are we, how are they addressing pets? Are you allowed to bring your pets to this property? Um, sometimes you are. A lot of times you aren't. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, whether short-term rentals are allowed, even if they're allowed by the homeowners association and there aren't any restrictions, the partnership agreement will dictate whether you can rent it out when it's your week and you're not using it. Whether you can trade weeks with the other owners, how that looks like, what that looks like. Um, resale, if I want to sell my 25%, I might be required to ask the other owners first um, if they want to buy that before putting it on the market. 
management of the partnership is going to be addressed in this partnership agreement also, and a rotating calendar. We typically see, like with the 25% um, ownership, that's basically one week a month. And share A, B, C, D, and just A, B, C, D. And a lot of times there's calendars for years and years and years. So you know exactly what year you're gonna get the week of New Year's, what um, spring break week in March. Um, what else? Trevor, why don't you talk to us a little bit about financing because this is definitely out of the box. Um, we do see a lot of partial ownership buyers just paying cash for it outright. Um, can you finance a partial share? Yes, you can. Um, not There's not a lot of opportunity out there to finance partial shares. I believe we might be one of the only banks that will do it. Okay. Uh, but we do have a fractional we do have a fractional program here at Alpine Bank. Um, because it is, like you said, a little bit more out of the box, the parameters of that program are pretty specific. Um, just to name a couple of them, we will finance up to a 12th interest, so essentially one month out of the year. Uh, we won't go any lower than that, so if you're looking at one week out of the year, we wouldn't be able to finance that. But if you get four weeks out of the year, yeah, we can look at that. Okay. Um, also 40% down on this particular product. And those are probably the two big ones because those are a little bit a little bit different than your normal financing. Okay. And with this product too, you know, we can go up to 20 years on the amortization on that. Um, so that helps, that's a little bit flexible there for some folks. And I would say that's about kind of the mm -hmm. most important parts of it. And just to know that yes, we can we can do it. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you for that. Um, you bet. The, the price of these properties um, right now in Summit County, there are 32 partial ownerships for sale. And again, from 5% up to 80% um, currently. The price point is $2,000 to $400,000. Um, $400,000 is quite a lot for just a portion of that property, but um, there are some, some good options out there. Uh, Timeshares right now, there are 59 timeshares for sale, and we would uh, point you in the right direction as far as working with them specifically to purchase a timeshare, but we have sold many um, fractional ownerships over the years, so we can work with you on that. The timeshares currently for sale range from $1,500 up to $325,000. That 325 is for one week a year. It's crazy, isn't it? Um, that's Thanksgiving week and it's a bigger property, uh, four bedrooms, sleep 16. Um, that's, that's a lot of money, but there's a range. There's a range there. Um, um, so yeah. Keely, do you mind if I interject for a quick moment? Please do. Um, where are, are there certain areas where most of these timeshares or partials are prevalent, like different areas around sure. here? Good question. Um, most of the timeshares are in Breckenridge, a lot of them with really great uh, ski in, ski out access. And a lot of the partial ownership opportunities are at Copper and Keystone. Um, something else that's really cool about buying a partial share uh, is that a lot of these places, you can use the amenities even when it's not your week, mm -hmm. which is huge when it comes to parking. Just to be able to park in the um, parking garage at Grand Colorado on Peak 8. And or um, afterwards, after your yeah. Yeah, sure. I mean, that's worth, I don't know about 325000 but <laughs> that is worth a lot right there. Yes. And it's not your week, but you can still take the kids to the pool and you can go work out and use the amenities. So that is a huge perk of fractional, fractional ownership. Love if you have it. any questions, let me know. Um, use the Facebook chat or the Zoom chat. Again, financing options, call Trevor Wagner. Um, 
we've got his uh, contact information on Facebook and um, we really appreciate your time, Trevor. And you've given us lots of good info for out of the box financing. And um, we look forward to working with you soon. Thank you, Trevor. Thank you. Thank you, Trevor. Bye. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you. You too. Okay. Now, Isabel is going to talk to us about um, out of the box, not your average property, not your average loan. What, uh, what does that look like, Isabel? Yes, thank you. Um, so lots of scary terms getting tossed around, um, but nothing to be frightful of. So a lot of times you'll hear um, non-conforming and really what that's referring to is a jumbo loan. And a jumbo loan is anything that's over uh, 625,500 for the mortgage amount. So if you need to borrow $700,000 to purchase a uh, home in the mountains, you're getting what's considered a jumbo loan. Um, Isabel, I have a quick question just to add on to that. You said non-conforming, and I have a lot of people say, what makes a property non-warrantable? Can you kind of clarify there? Of course, I would love to. Um, non-warrantable, when you hear that, it's kind of scary as well. Uh, <laughs> but really what that means is it's just in-house, meaning you need to work with a local bank to um, get that kind of mortgage. It's also known as a portfolio loan. And um, what that means is it doesn't fit the secondary market under the Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac guidelines. And so that could be due to a couple of reasons. Either, you know, you've not had great history in the past, um, so it could be customer related or property related. And um, some instances on how it could be property related is those categories that uh, Keely mentioned, the timeshares and the partials. Um, Dina touched on vacant land. Um, some other instances are condo hotels. Uh, what that means is that the, uh, that the complex has a front desk. Um, anything that has commercial space attached to the complex of 35% or more, um, you're then getting a portfolio loan. Um, if you, if the majority of the complex is short-term rented, or if the majority of the complex is owned by one owner or trusts. And so those fall into the category of arms and an arm is an adjustable rate mortgage. So same thing, you still get it for over 30 years. So you don't have to pay it off in five or seven years. Um, I know that I get that question a lot. Um, and so what a five or seven year arm is, is for the first five years, you have that same interest rate. And then for the remainder 25 years, it could change on an annual basis. And then a seven year arm, uh, you have the same interest rate for the first seven years. And then the remainder, it could change um, for that. And so best thing to do is work with that local lender, local bank, um, they try and get that HOA questionnaire off to the association right away so that we know what guidelines um, and what parameters the bank can lend on. And again, using a local lender is so important with any of these um, non-warrantable um, condo complexes. Right. How do, you Correct. Know, how do you know which condo has these sorts of things going into it? And that's our lenders know. Because Great question. Detail, that could change every day. It might be right. today, but it might not be the same a month from now. So, right. use so not, on, not only is it important to use a local lender, but also a local realtor, because we know the complexes. Um, Spinnaker on the lake um, over on Lake Dillon. You know, those are, they have timeshares in them. Same with the Gold Point over in Breckenridge. These are kind of places that we know right off the bat, uh, right away, as well as the bank. Um, on where lending is going to be a little different. Right. 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 Thank you, Isabel. Um, there's, there's a lot of loan options out there for all yeah. of these different types of properties that we have in Summit County and different scenarios. And we'd love to have the opportunity to sit down with you guys one-on-one -on -one and have a buyer consultation and talk about your goals um, 
in, in the next month, in the next year, over the next 10 years. Maybe you wanna buy a second home here and then you're gonna be retiring in five years and, and move here full time. So talking about your dreams and goals, um, is it cheaper to buy land and build the house that you want or is it cheaper to buy existing construction? Again, what are your goals? Um, maybe a partial ownership could be a really good fit for you and your family. So please use um, the chat to ask us any questions. Um, we'd, love to, we'd love to talk with you more. Okay, who do we have next? Deed restrictions, Trisha. Another yeah. strange thing that not every, not every locale has. Right. Talk to us about deed restricted housing, please. Deed restrictions. And do, don't you feel like in every consultation or first initial meeting with a buyer, this comes up, whether they know about it or they're saying, what is a deed restriction? Do I qualify? It seems to be clear as mud. And that is sometimes the case because they're all a little bit different here in Summit County. Um, there are certainly a few deed restrictions that are more common than others that you have to live in Summit County, that you have to work in Summit County for 30 hours or more a week, um, that there might be an appreciation cap. I'd say those were probably, probably the most common, although there are others like uh, you can only rent it for a certain number of days or the amount of income that you have coming in from those rentals that needs to be limited or that you maybe don't have to live here, but that you have to rent to somebody that lives here. So they're all a little bit different. And for that reason, a good rule of thumb is to certainly reach out to the Summit Combined Housing Authority. Um, on the slide, I did include their website and I would highly recommend if you're thinking that you might qualify as a local um, or as uh, you know, maybe someone who is here part of the time or an investor in general, reach out to the housing authority because they are lovely and would be happy to chat with you and um, help you sort out if this is a good option for you or not. Um, there are some specific neighborhoods that are known for having lots of deed restricted properties. Wellington over in Breckenridge, Peak One in Frisco, um, Smith Ranch over in Silverthorne. And, you know, these properties are definitely, um, if they're new, like uh, Smith Ranch is a new construction, that means that there's likely a lottery in place because there's a huge need here in Summit County for housing. Um, so I know, Keely, you had an interesting one with a lottery type situation recently or maybe a couple of years ago. Yes, um, lottery type in that it was so affordable because of the appreciation cap mm -hmm. um, to keep it affordable for the next person. Right. Um, it was so affordable that there was at least a dozen people that wanted this property and how the housing authority decided who won the lottery in had the right to purchase this property was the person who had lived in Summit County the longest out of all those offers. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that was 20 years. That is crazy. Was that your client? Um, no. No. It wasn't. But lucky guy. He got a great place in Frisco for um, 150000 I think. Yeah, He'd been that's in the county for 20 years. That's great. As an example of that as well, um, I was looking in our MLS to scope out what's been going on with deed restricted properties just in the last six months. We have 50 that are active and 41 of those 50 are new construction. So was completed in 2019, 2020, or is still being um, built at the moment. There are 40 that are pending or under contract. All of those are 2019 or newer, and nine that have sold in the last six months. So just a little bit of a snapshot for you. Um, there was one that I came across that's interesting, a good comparison. Three bed, two bath that was deed restricted in Wellington, sold for 558 Almost the identical single family home that was uh, open market 
three bed, two bath, a little bit smaller even sold for 870. And that's all within the last six months. So just, just goes to show that, um, you know, that uh, 558, is that affordable for our um, locals? That's crazy. That's answer. Yeah. I always say affordable like this because $558,000, that's, that's crazy. It's affordable housing, right, um, right. but there's lots for sale right now. A yeah. lot of deed restricted properties for sale. Yes, absolutely. So reach out to the Summit Combined Housing Authority if you're considering it. You know, we can help you through that process. But there are sometimes properties that they have that aren't going to be listed in the MLS. So, you know, that's maybe a rarity, but good to reach out to them, touch base, see if you might qualify for that sort of a situation. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you, Tricia. If anybody has any questions, um, please reach out. Uh, give us a call, 468-6800, team at summitrealestate.com. We've got our individual email addresses here as well. And we'd be happy to chat with you more about your goals and what you're looking for in Summit County. And we'd also love to hear what do you want to hear about in our, the next one will be our fifth buyer webinar, which is very exciting. We're, we're happy to be a resource and um, provide some valuable information. Keep the questions coming. Yes, please do. Enjoy this beautiful summer day, everybody. And thank you for watching. Thank you for your time. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.